Kim and I want to take a few minutes here just to thank Utah uh, for their I don't know I don't know how to explain it but I guess the forethought and the really the caring that they did to do all these state parks and a lot of the visitor areas and, and uh, visitor centers and the restrooms and stuff this is definitely a tourist mecca and you can see why you come here I mean look yes. at all the walls that they've done this is a great place that you could bring a group of people to picnic and stuff so Utah you do an excellent job up. on your tourism keep and up also, the good work also I mean we've always said that Utah is like the most underrated state there is because there's so much to see and do and the beauty here is just unbelievable that's right so, thanks Utah. Yep, way we're, to go. We're going to enjoy it for the next two or three weeks. So we drove down to Panwich, it's right off 89, it's uh, north of Highway 12, headed back up to Interstate 70. But this store here is a lot more reasonable price, and Kim will give you a little rundown on that when she gets back out. This is Joe's Main Street Market, fresh meats, uh, we've stopped here once before. Um, they're a lot more reasonable than it is in Bryce Canyon City. Uh, 20 minutes from us, that's not far to uh, get some better priced groceries. Parking lot's not too bad. You can park over there if you have a rig, if that truck wasn't there. And there's a little parking lot over there you can park. Otherwise, the lot in here is a little bit too tight for any big rigs. But, uh, Diesel here in town is $269, and we saw $249 as you coming in. So, uh, it's not too bad. Um, about the same price as Bryce Canyon City. The, uh, we got a pizza place here in town with spaghetti. We saw it finally opened up today. So that's nice. And they got a lot of little odds and ends stores here in town. Not a very big town. But we'll wait for Kim to get back out here and tell us what her haul is and how much things are. Well, Kim, you made it back. I made it back. <laughs> it was you, got your, cheap. you got your hand sanitizer? No, I got what I got on me right here. Good. I'm going to do the groceries. All right. So, you went in there. How much did you spend? Sixty-six twenty-one. Sixty-six twenty-one. That's about cheap for us going to any grocery yeah, store. Yeah, and look what they have. Let's see Shirley, what she's got. Shirley's going to be really, really impressed. Uh-oh, bread flour. Guess we know the bread maker will be fired up. That's right. All right. What else? How much was the bread flour? Do you remember? It was seven dollars and something. But I mean, I paid four for the regular size one. That one's more. So pretty good. Pr the same price. Pretty good price. I got some lettuce, some tomato. I needed some more of this so I could make your um, your lip oh, yeah. soup mix stuff to make your nice. I got your chips to go with it. Nice. Two bags of those. And some hamburger buns. I figured we'd have a hamburger one nice. day. Nice. Since we ain't ketoing anyway. Well, it's kind of hard to keto. I know. And let's see. What else I got? Got here? some creamer looking there, I see. Yeah, I got some creamer. Some creamer, some 12 sour pack cream of Cokes. Back. Got some more half and half. Another thing, refried beans. All right, so we'll have, Kim will be able to have her coffee in the morning. Thank the Lord. So I won't get shot in the morning. And some tortillas, two things of eggs. And two tomatoes. Two tomatoes? Mm-hmm. And a 12 pack of Cokes. I like to have a Coke for in the morning. All right, we'll get that in there and take the cart and, and then disinfect yourself. I will. <laughs> this is what we've been doing for three months. All right, so not a bad haul here in Panwich. All right, this is right on the outside of, uh, of town of Panwich as you're coming in from Bryce. You'll be going right by this way if you're coming up from 89 on, uh, from Page, headed up to uh, I-70. So there's the C-Stop Pizza. 
You see they got some stuff going on. They got spaghetti there too. Got a little outdoor seating area there. So that's good. Then you got the Silver, Silver Eagle uh, gas station there. Right now it's $249 for diesel and $214 for regular as of this recording. But it looks like you should be able to get your, uh, dump too. your rig in there. Looks like it's an RV dump too. Mm -hmm. We got an, uh, an RV dump here too. So that's fantastic. It must be around back or something. It sure says it. But that's good. So it gives you another option if you don't dump up in Bryce. But uh, you're probably going to have to come in the other way because I'm sure your fuel will be on the driver's side. So you might have to come in from town that way and then go in there. Or the other lane may be open. So it just depends how big a rig you get. But anyway, I thought we'd show you that and give you a couple you options. Okay, I wanted to show you something here that it may help you if you like boondocking and uh, staying out in the middle of nowhere. This is Fremont ATV Trail. There you'd be coming from 89, this is Highway 12, and you'll see the sign right there to turn into here. But what you can do is you can go right up this road here. There is a Highway 12 that goes to Bryce. But right up this road here is called Tom's Best Spring Road. This road here will go all the way around, all the way over to, I think, Highway 22. That's about, uh, I think it's 12 miles, maybe 21 miles. All the way through there but there's a whole bunch of dispersed camping up in there i mean you can get big rigs in there i wouldn't be afraid to take a couple 40 footers in there without a problem and uh you just got to be careful what trail trails you go up so that's the only deal but they've got bike paths here that go all the way down from red canyon all the way into bryce which is very cool so i think that's cool so, a lot of dispersed camping up there. Uh, there's a lot of places that you can pull over and uh, go up into some loops. There's some big green areas that you can go to. But man, this is, uh, this is something else. But if you're looking for some boondocking, this is Fire Service Road, and I can't remember the name of it. But if you look it up, Tom's Best Spring Road. A lot of RVers and YouTubers have been up here. But we love it up here. That road there is a nice road, even if it's raining. But some of your offshoot roads could be a little wet and muddy. But use your best judgment. There you go. And you can see there's plenty of areas to pull over for little vehicles. There's road. There's 3625 for a service road that you can go back in there. this main road you'll come up to a couple areas that's right there's some other forest service roads right off it for your big rigs if you want to park there and then go drive around in another vehicle and kind of search out somewhere you can get and some of these roads up here are pretty tight and once you get in you may have trouble getting out but this road here you won't have any problem Tom's Best Spring Road. This is uh, Fire Road, I believe, 117. See, there's a nice little spot there. You could get a couple campers in and do it by yourself. There's 3626. You can go up into there. Nice couple spots right up there. Well, there's a lot of movement down here yesterday. They have some beautiful spots back there. That's right. But no firewood cutting back here unless you got a permit. But they didn't say anything about being able to gather it. So we're assuming it just means cutting it down. But we parked down here a little farther, right off to the left, in a nice
nice open area when we first came here until we found something better that we liked. Plus it was on one of the other trail roads and it got a little dusty. So when you park on the road, people go by, you're going to get dusty. Yeah, you got side-by-sides, motorcycles. So they came and cut a tree out right here the other day. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn right, right here. And we're going to go up here. There's a couple of them right up here. So it's kind of like a little V here. So you can go immediately to the left right here. And there's a nice spot right there. Yep, a little fire ring made of rocks. Looks like pretty easy, pretty in. Good clearance on the rigs. Get in there and get turned around. Again, these are kind of gravel roads. Yeah, I don't know whether they'll turn a little bit slippery. If it rained, I don't know. But I'd, but I'd be careful. The right up here. Yeah, I'm gonna show you that one. Oh, the tents in it. That's the one that. Um, no, there's one right up there to the right. They weren't there no, when we I, left I, either. I honestly think that's the camper that was here two days ago. Turned the other way. Sure does look like. It. I don't think so. I don't remember seeing this that. This is truck. the site that I really like right here. That is really pretty. They have a tent in it now. It's absolutely beautiful. Yep. So that's a good spot right there. Very much so. Plenty of room for a big rig. And then down here, the end of this road, this, this road does not go through. So this is where we're camping down here. show you the view here in a little bit. It might be just a little bit windy right now, but hey, we had a nice trip to town. Got out of the RV. Got it all set up here. Look at this. Isn't this something else? Look at this. It's dusty up here, but we can overlook the valley. Yeah, it's very pretty. Kim can uh, do her dishes <laughs> and look right out over there. So far, we haven't seen any elk or any antelope up here or really any critters whatsoever to be honest with you but i'll tell you what it's a good spot to be boondocking it really is and it doesn't cost us a dime, a dime. stop the madness start the adventure here we go can't wait for tomorrow i know i'm excited <laughs>